Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nuddle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us on Patreon. Please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are considering two very important concepts from the area of risk management, that is, hedging or hedge assets and safe haven assets. And obviously that is very important when you do portfolio management or consider optimal diversification to see which assets provide diversification or counter the important risks that your portfolio is exposed to. Well, obviously you can just consider correlations between assets as a proxy for diversifications or risk exposure, but it's widely known that it is not enough to have your portfolio being uncorrelated with an asset for it to be a good diversifier and all the more so to be a safe haven and even more so to be an efficient hedge. So today we're considering which assets can be good hedges or at least safe havens for the risks that are associated with S&P 500. That is a really good proxy of the US stock market. And most commonly, investors, practitioners, either go with precious metals, um, most of the time gold, or less commonly so, silver or platinum, three of the most commonly traded precious metals, uh, or bills and bonds that are considered safe assets that do not necessarily depreciate in value when the stock market plunges, or they can also consider real estate. That is another risky asset that is exposed to a different set of risks than the stock market at large. However, we see that it's not always the case, even historically, uh, given the uh, housing bubble of 2007-2008 has generally coincided with the stock market crash. So the link uh, of real estate being a safe haven or a hedge is already doubtful from the purely speculative historical side. But today we will do some simple calculations, simple mathematical modeling in Excel to figure out which of these assets, these six candidate assets, and obviously you could also test the same procedures for other assets that you can consider safe havens or hedges for your portfolio, which of those are the best, or at least which of those are decent? First of all, we've got our price data, total return index data for S&P 500 and each of the six candidate safe havens slash hedges from mid-October 2010 all the way to mid-October 2020, so actually yesterday. Well, we've got a 10-year period that's more than enough to generate some plausible inferences about hedging or safe haven properties of these assets. So first of all, we need to calculate daily returns of each of these total return indices. So just dividing total return index today by the total return index yesterday and subtracting one. And we can drag it across all seven assets, S&P 506 candidate hedges slash safe havens, bottom right clicked all the way down and be fine with that. Now, what we need to do is we need to sort our returns according to the ascending order for the return of S&P 500. As that's the risks of S&P 500, we want to mitigate or hedge away. Well, first of all, we need to select a seven column array and um, select its length corresponding to the length of our data set. So from row four to row uh, 2516. So let's put one over here. So it's easier for us to type in the formula one over here control down, and then we can actually easily select the array that we need. So we have selected the seven uh, column array, and then we can apply the sort function. So here we need to select our initial array of returns, specify which is the index that we want to sort by, and we want to sort by the returns of S&P 500, so index number one, then we need to specify the sort order, and we want to sort them in ascending order, so from the lowest returns, the most negative returns, to most positive returns, and then we need to input false over here, because we want to sort by rows and not by columns. And then we can enforce this formula using Shift, Control, Enter, and get 
all of our seven arrays sorted by the S&P 500 return from smallest to largest. And we don't even need to do the old data sort procedure. So now we need to figure out the percentiles of S&P 500 returns that correspond to the respective ranked returns. And we can do it in a number of ways. Perhaps the easiest one would be to apply the rank function to each of the returns and figure out the rank of this return in the whole array of S&P 500 returns. And we need to lock this array because we don't want to change and sort it in ascending order. So input one here as well. And then we need to divide it by the total number of observations in this array. So count the same array. We can just copy it across and paste it over here. And then we enforce this formula using enter. Bottom will click it all the way down. And we get our empirical distribution function, actually. That is the percentile of each of the returns in the whole area of returns. What we can do now is we can calculate our simple sample-wide correlations between S&P 500 and each of our six candidate assets. So we can just use the Corel formula and enforce it onto two arrays, one being the changing array as we drag it around, and the other always being the array of S&P 500 returns that needs to be locked. We can enforce this formula, drag it across, and see that we have got some pretty plausible candidates for being either hedges or safe havens. Again, the theoretical definition of a hedge is an asset that is negatively correlated with your benchmark of choice when the benchmark of choice is going down by a lot. So it's a, an asset that is negatively correlated when the benchmark crashes, pretty much. A safe haven can be defined using a number of ways. The most common definition is it's an asset that has a zero correlation with the benchmark across the whole sample. So by these means, we can say that bills and gold, so treasury bills, short-term government debt, and gold are safe havens. But another definition of safe havens is uh, more easily corresponding to the definition of a hedge. In that case, safe haven can be defined as an asset that has zero correlation with the benchmark, provided it goes down by a lot, that is, crashes. So here is where our empirical distribution function, our percentile of S&P 500 returns, comes in handy. Because we can calculate the correlations for the percentiles of S&P 500 returns that we can define over here. And here we have got a set of various percentile ranges that we can be interested in. First of all, at the tails, we want to be very precise and uh, calculate correlations on a wide range of various intervals. So for example, we calculate the uh, correlation on an interval from 0th percentile to 1st percentile. So it's 1% of total worst case scenarios, 1% of worst days in the recent S&P 500 history, and see how the return is correlated with each of these six assets in that case. And then we can consider uh, other percentile ranges. So for example, from 1% to 5%, pretty bad days, but not the worst, from 5% to 10%, again, pretty bad days, but not as bad as previously mentioned, and other 10% uh, intervals um, all the way up to 90%, and then symmetrically, we consider the best days in the recent S&P 500 history, from 90th to 95th, from 95th to 99th, and from 99th to 100th. So, here, we might want to see the dynamic conditional correlation of S&P 500 with each of these six assets. So what do we expect? We expect that for a hedge, for a true hedge, the correlation in these three intervals would be negative. For a safe haven, we would expect that it is close to zero. So either exactly equal to zero, which is improbable, or is of negligible magnitude. So for example, something like 001 or minus 001. And then uh, over here, we expect the correlation to be more resembling the overall sample-wide correlation. So now we can just apply a bunch of cleverly arranged if formulas to get what we need over here. So first of all, we apply the Corel function, and then we need to specify that we want to figure out the correlation between the two arrays only if the value of the percentile of the empirical distribution function of the S&P 500 falls within these boundaries. 
So if our percentile, and we select the area with percentiles and lock both columns and rows over here, if it's greater or equal to the bottom range of our percentile interval, and here we need to lock the column because we don't want to change it to drag it across assets, if that's the case, then we need to check if this percentile is lower than the upper bound of our percentile range. So we can just copy that across and say it should be less than the upper bound. So here it will be cell P2522. And here we also need to lock the column. And if both these conditions are satisfied, then we need to take, first of all, the array of S&P 500 returns, and we need to lock those because we don't want the S&P 500 returns to change. We are interested in the correlation with S&P 500 if it crashes. And then we can close the two parentheses, type in a comma, and copy this, but here we need to unlock the columns in this formula, but leave the rows locked, because we want this to change as we drag it around across our candidate assets, and we will see the dynamic correlations, dynamic conditional correlations, at various percentile range. But we leave the uh, rows locked, because we don't want the rows to change as we drag it down across various percentile intervals. And then we can enforce this formula. We get one, which is reassuring because, again, the correlation of S&P 500 with itself should be one, regardless of the percentile interval. But we are most interested in dragging it around and figuring out the tail correlations with other assets. And we already can see some pretty alarming results, but let's first just bottom right click it all the way down and get our correlations at various percentile ranges. So straight away, we can see that, unfortunately, gold is not a true hedge. When the stock market, represented by S&P 500, crashes, it experiences some of the worst days in its uh, past 10-year history. It's actually positively correlated with gold. It means that if the stock market downfall is very significant, gold moves down with it. And it's even more true for silver and platinum, with even higher correlation coefficients still positive in both of these cases. Real estate has a correlation coefficient that's close to 1, meaning that, again, even if we don't include the uh, stock market crash that coincided with the housing bubble, uh, real estate market is also very responsive to shocks that are characteristic of the stock market, the S&P 500. The only two assets that show robust negative correlations at the very tail, from 0 to 1st percentile, are treasury bills and government bonds. Both of those show relatively high negative correlation, which could suggest that they are indeed hedges against wide stock market downturns. But what happens later on is that gold becomes a decent enough hedge against modest stock market downturns, with um, silver and platinum fulfilling that role to less of an extent, with bills and bonds actually being safe havens at that case, and real estate still having quite high positive correlations. What it means is that gold is not a hedge against very bad events, but indeed a hedge against pretty bad events. Bills and bonds are hedges against terrible events, but not hedges at all for modestly bad events. There, they are safe havens at best. But what is most beautiful about this procedure is that it allows you to visualize dynamic correlations using a graph. And that's exactly what it shows over here. Here it shows the conditional correlation of gold with S&P 500 for various percentile ranges. And here we can easily see that if the stock market falls, so and falls by a lot, so the percentile is close to zero, the correlation is identifiably positive. Uh, later on, it fluctuates around zero, and it's actually quite notably negative when you have a uh, 5th percentile or 10th percentile, so uh, modest stock market crashes. We can drag this across to see the correlation profile, the dynamic correlation structure for other assets. For example, this is silver, and we see how much worse of a hedge silver is even in that range, 
for platinum, this is even exacerbated, the correlation is even higher. And uh, let's see regarding bonds and bills. For bills, the situation is pretty much the reverse. You have negative correlations at the very tail, uh, slightly positive correlations with modest drawdowns, and around zero correlations everywhere else except the very peak, except the very best days for the stock market, where bonds appreciate together with the stock market, which is an incredibly good piece of news for investors in treasury bills, again, uh, bearish investors or investors with very high levels of risk aversion, really low risk tolerance, that investing in bills, I mean, they provide a very low return, but at least their risk profile is incredibly decent. You can hedge yourself against incredible stock market drawdowns, but you can also get some upside when the market is appreciating. So, at least some good news here. Regarding bonds, the situation is uh, not as good as with treasury bills, but you still have some nice hedging potential around the very tail. Uh, however, uh, government bonds do depreciate when the market appreciates a lot, as evidenced by negative correlation at the very rightmost side of the tail of the empirical distribution for S&P 500 returns. And finally, real estate. And real estate shows something that would be very characteristic of another stock that is correlated with the uh, overall market uh, very tightly. It shows a very positive correlation at the very tails, uh, either left-hand side or right-hand side, and uh, lower but still positive correlations uh, somewhere in the middle of the empirical distribution function. What does it mean? Well, it means that dynamic correlation coefficients allow you to see the whole picture, the picture that is not captured by sample-wide correlation coefficients. You could have been fooled by thinking that gold is a perfectly reasonable safe haven, given the fact that its sample-wide correlation coefficient is minuscule, but actually when the market goes down, gold is correlated with it, so it goes down indeed as well. While, for example, bills, uh, given the fact that they have such a low sample-wide correlation, uh, have a very attractive hedging property, being negatively correlated with the market when it goes down, and positively correlated with the market when it goes up. While treasury bonds, government bonds in general, are actually a little bit of a bear market type of an asset. They are negatively correlated with the market, regardless of it going up a lot or down a lot. They will move in the reverse direction, if there is a strong market-wide movement. While real estate behaves just as another stock, interestingly, by appreciating significantly with the market and depreciating a lot when the market goes down. And that's all there is for hedging and safe havens. This is a very simple and intuitive, yet an incredibly useful technique to assess hedging properties or safe haven properties of uh, stocks or even whole asset classes, as we did now, for potential inclusion in your portfolio for risk management purposes. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions on videos for business, economics or finance you would like me to make. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.